Now this brings me to the final part of this episode, which has nothing to do with anything that came before, except it relates back to the Amanita muscaria mushroom. And I only tell you this story now because there is nowhere else I can tell this story. If you have listened to the podcast this far, if you've been following the 10 episode series, then you have just unlocked an Easter egg. What follows now is a hidden, untold story that I call Isaac's Word. Sometime around the fall of 2005, I began to notice full-page ads in the alternative weekly newspaper in Seattle, a paper called The Stranger. You can find The Stranger online. It is a great paper. I love it. I read it every week. But these ads in The Stranger, around the fall, spring of 2005, they were different. They could only be described as full-page manifestos, rants, or diatribes from an anonymous writer who called himself Isaac's Word. Now, the first week I saw this full-page ad of ranting nonsense, I ignored it. The second week, I found it annoying and mildly amusing. But by three weeks in, Isaac's Word was now taking up two full pages in the center spread of the newspaper, sometimes three pages, and the rants were becoming more elaborate and more insane. This trend of Isaac's word posting two-page paid rants in the center of the stranger continued for three months, or more, at least three months. Now, I know a few things about publishing, and I knew whoever was posting these two-page centerfold rants was paying thousands of dollars to take up two pages of prime real estate in the center of Seattle's alternative weekly newspaper. So reluctantly, I began reading this rants. I began reading them week after week. And what I found was deeply troubling. These rants, from Isaac's word, consisted of conspiracy theories about mind control and mushrooms and society. The manifestos were jumbled and meandering and poorly written, but I could recall some of the talking points from these articles now. First of all, the writer was obsessed with the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and he referenced Nurse Ratchet over and over and over again as a scolding or shaming force in the repression of the freedoms of modern society. Now, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is a movie based on a novel by Ken Kesey, Ken Kesey is, of course, a founding member of the Merry Pranksters and the primary subject of Tom Wolfe's book, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test. So right away, obsession with Nurse Ratchet and Cuckoo's Nest, I have a clue that this person is tuned into psychedelic culture somehow. Now, in later rants, I see that Isaac's word is also obsessed with Terrence McKenna, And he believes that Terence McKenna is actually a later-day reincarnation of John the Apostle, the author of the book of Revelations in the Bible. And he is so obsessed with the notion that Terence McKenna is a reincarnation of John the Apostle that he believes that Terence McKenna will be resurrected from his premature death in 2003 and will become the undead harbinger of the apocalypse in 2012. Okay, so I could tell Isaac's word is off the rails. It takes me months of ignoring this guy. But once I pay close attention to what he's saying, given all the clues in the text, I immediately recognize that whoever is behind Isaac's word, whoever is spending tens of thousands of dollars each week, they are some kind of big-time psychedelic kook. So in addition to the crazy elements I've already described, Isaac's word went on to claim that he was the reincarnation of Christ and that he was in constant psychic trinity with Prem Rawat, an Indian-American cult guru who preaches the value of joy, and Neil Young, the Canadian-American songwriter who writes songs about the needle and the damage done and all of that stuff. According to Isaac's word, The trinity between himself, Prem Rawat, and Neil Young represented the second coming of Christ, as told by the book of Revelations. And on top of that, any day now, 
Neil Young would put out a press release that would confirm that he was the second coming of Christ and that all of the stuff that was printed in these stranger rants was true. And oh yes, Terrence McKenna would rise from the grave to put the shameful eye of Nurse Ratchet down for good. Now, I will say that I am slow to motivate to do anything. In most cases, I could give a shit about stuff like this. It is just more noise and bullshit coming through my weekly newspaper. But Isaac's word went on and on and on in The Stranger for up to six months, maybe. Every week or every other week, there was a new two or three page screed from Isaac's word. And each week I tried to ignore it, but each week it went on and on with more crazy stuff about Terrence McKenna and Nurse Ratchet and Neil Young, and I couldn't take it anymore. After six months, I broke down and decided to do something about it. Okay, so how do you approach a situation like this? What's the angle? How do you get, a, get an edge into this madness? Clearly, Isaac's word had devolved into psychedelic gibberish, but the stranger was allowing this delusion to continue because they were receiving thousands of dollars in advertising revenue each week to publish this nonsense. So my professional training is as a writer and a reporter. And at the time, I was no longer publishing Trip Magazine. I was working on a screenplay and submitting articles on spec. I had no way to contact Isaac's Word, so the first thing I did was call Neil Young's publicist. If you've ever done any reporting or celebrity reporting, you know that the easiest way to contact a celebrity, the lowest rung in their entourage, is always the publicist. <laughs> so I left a voicemail with Neil Young's publicist and told them that there was a person in Seattle publishing articles in the newspaper claiming that they were in psychic contact with Neil Young and that Neil Young was the second coming of Christ. I asked the publicist for a comment on this story. Within three hours, the publicist called me back and told me there was no truth to these allegations and that Neil Young was definitely not in psychic contact with anyone named Isaac's Word in Seattle. And in addition, this was the first time they had heard about anyone claiming to be in psychic contact with Neil Young. And even though it had been going on for six months, they didn't get any word from it from anyone. I was the first person to tell Neil Young that somebody was in psychic contact with him, publishing in this Seattle paper, The Stranger. And the publicist asked me, should I take legal action? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to get in contact with this guy and figure out what's going on. I will get back to you if I think you need to take legal action. So now that I had an official comment from Neil Young's publicist, I then called the stranger's advertising department, and I strong-armed them into giving me Isaac's words contact information. I told them that I was in contact with Neil Young, and he was upset that someone was publishing false information about him in The Stranger, and that he was considering legal action against the publisher. Now, that was enough for them to give me the phone number and contact information for the person publishing all these rants in the paper. Next, I called Isaac's word, and I left him a message on his voicemail. I told him that I was a psychedelic journalist. I told him that I worked with Trip Magazine, which at the time was no longer publishing. I told him that I was in contact with Neil Young and that I wanted to ask him questions about his posts in The Stranger. I told him that it was urgent and that I needed to speak with him immediately. Within 24 hours, I heard back from Isaac's word, and he agreed to meet with me in person. The next day, I met Isaac's word at a coffee shop in the Wallingford area of Seattle. Now, if you've listened to these podcasts, you know I am a no-nonsense guy who has a very low tolerance for people talking shit. I like things front and center. I don't like nuance and obfuscation. I want things to be clear. So from the first interaction with Isaac's word, I gave him a few copies of Trip Magazine and told him that I represented Neil Young and the psychedelic community. I told him that we had noticed his paid rants in the Stranger newspaper, and we wanted them to stop because they were false and defamatory, and that he was clearly delusional and was making a fool of himself, not to mention wasting thousands of dollars spreading this nonsense that nobody was reading. I told him all of this over coffee in about 10 minutes. 
I assured him that I was the only person paying attention to what he was writing and that I was the only person who would ever contact him to ask him to stop. I told him that I was asking him to stop his rants on behalf of the psychedelic community and on behalf of Neil Young, who might be considering legal action if he continued these rants into the future. In the following hours, I listened to Isaac's word, and I listened to him make his case. We talked for a half hour at the coffee shop and then walked back to his house a few blocks away. He was a relatively normal-looking, uh, late 30s, early 40s white guy. He told me he had owned a successful chain of bakeries in the north part of Seattle and that he had sold his business once he began learning about shamanism and studying psychedelic lore. He told me that since he started experimenting with psychedelics, he had alienated all of his friends and been committed to the local Harborview Mental Crisis Facility twice in the two previous years. That's twice in the two previous years. And he was now renting in an apartment, studying ethnomycology, and trying to get his life back together. And although he had millions of dollars in the bank from selling his bakery business, he had worn through most of that money with reckless spending, giving huge personal loans to friends, spending and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars buying full-page ads in The Stranger every week. He, after a few years studying psychedelics on this spiritual quest, was now almost broke. Now, I'm ashamed to admit it because I like to think I don't give a fuck, but I felt sorry for this guy, and I spent nearly three hours with him listening to him vent his crazy bullshit about Nurse Ratchet and Prim Rawat and Neil Young and Terrence McKenna and so on and so on. And despite my objections, he claimed he was in psychic contact with Neil Young the entire time we were talking. He claimed that he could see into an invisible waiting room of spirits hovering just above his eye line. And he could see the spirits of people coming in and out of this waiting room while we were talking. He told me Neil Young was talking to him as he spoke. And then when I told him that I had already been in contact with Neil Young's people, and that they had denied having any psychic contact with him, he frowned and became very concerned. You really contacted Neil Young, he asked, almost ashamed. I confirmed that I had contacted Neil Young, and that he wanted nothing to do with this. Isaac's word objected over and over and over again that I had got it wrong, and I had to tell him over and over and over again that he was delusional. He was not in contact with Neil Young. He had to stop it. And then, finally, he asked me to watch a video of a Neil Young live performance with him because he assured me there would be hidden messages in the tape that would prove that he was in psychic contact with Neil Young. He would be able to prove to me by watching this live performance that Neil Young was sending messages to him through the TV. Now, despite my better judgment, I agreed to watch a few minutes of the Neil Young concert. And within five minutes, Neil Young is telling a story about a young girl dancing in her bedroom. It is a pretty innocuous story. But Isaac's word tries to convince me that Neil Young is not talking about dancing, and he's not talking about a little girl. He's talking about masturbating. And he's not talking about dancing in your room. He's talking about masturbating in public. And that really... The gist of all of his rants was that men should not be ashamed to masturbate in public. Okay, now this is where the story gets weird, if it hasn't been weird so far. Isaac's word turns to me and tells me in all sincerity that through the video, Neil Young is instructing us to masturbate together. Because men escaping the shameful eye of Nurse Ratchet and having the freedom to masturbate together is the key to world peace. Now, what am I to say to this? The Stranger is the queer alternative weekly, but they have a classified section for men who want to hook up with other men, 
You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on weekly full-page ads talking about mushrooms and civilization and claiming to be in psychic contact with Neil Young in order to hook up with another man who wants to masturbate with you. There's a very easy way to do that. The fact that this whole journey down the rabbit hole of Isaac's word ended up in some kind of roundabout pseudo-spiritual circle jerk fantasy should not have surprised me. And yet it did. This is what this guy's psychosis came down to at the core. At the center of this entire six-month saga of full-spread psychedelic rants in the local Alternative Weekly, there was a lonely rich guy who just wanted to masturbate with other guys without shame. And I don't give a fuck about that. He should be able to do that all day and all night. This is Seattle. You can easily do that sort of thing here. It's not a problem. But because he could not articulate this impulse, or he couldn't articulate this without some internal shame, he concocted an entire conspiracy about how the system was oppressing him through the evil, shameful eye of Nurse Ratchet, and that the trinity of saviors, Neil Young, Prem Rawat, and Terence McKenna, would rise up and anoint him the resurrection of Jesus, and free him from the bondage of society so that he can masturbate in public with other men without shame or judgment. And he spent literally over $100,000 publishing this nonsense in the newspaper. He sold his successful local business. He alienated all of his friends and family and had been committed to a mental institution two times in the years before I met him. And he was clearly insane. Even though he looked like a normal guy and he dressed like a normal guy and he walked on the street like a normal guy and he can carry on a conversation like a normal guy, he believed that he was seeing into an invisible waiting room filled with spirits and him was in contact, in psychic contact with Neil Young. All right, now here's the kicker. When I asked him what he was taking to make him think he was in psychic contact with Neil Young, he told me that he was experimenting with the sacred mushroom. He told me that the sacred mushroom was the key to ego death and that he could actually feel the mushroom squeezing and pinching and crushing his frontal lobes. And he, he made this motion like, his, like grabbing his frontal lobes with his hand and squeezing it like a sponge. He said that he could actually feel the mushroom squeezing his frontal lobes, totally destroying his ego like a chemical lobotomy. And he explained this to me like it was a good thing, that ego death was the proper first step on the spiritual path. And it was, in fact, the ego death that allowed him to be in psycho psychic contact with the astral plane. It was all due to the ego death, and it was all due to the sacred mushroom. And then I asked him what mushroom he was taking and how often he ate it. And he told me, in all sincerity, that he was eating Amanita muscaria mushrooms all day, every day. And when I asked him why in the world he would eat Amanita muscaria mushrooms every day, he told me, without blinking, because it's Soma. Right? I mean, it's Soma, isn't it? As if that was legitimately the only reason he needed to eat Amanita all day, every day. Because it's Soma. And Soma can't be bad for you, right? Now, there you have it. According to him, his logic was airtight. I mean, he was eating Soma and seeing into the astral plane. How the fuck can you argue with his results? So, either... You believe in all this nonsense, and you believe that Isaac's word was on a spiritual path to enlightenment, and that he was in contact with Neil Young and Prem Rawat psychically, and he is the second coming of Christ. Or you believe the alternative, 
which is he is fucking insane and this mushroom makes you fucking insane. Now, I don't know about you, but I have seen enough evidence to believe the latter. The mushroom makes you insane. That is the evidence I see with my eyes. And I don't know what all this bullshit is in these books about Amanita Muscaria being some sort of gateway to immortality or gnosis or spiritual illumination. It is all crap. It just makes you insane. It just makes you insane. And the only good thing I can say about this entire ordeal with Isaac's word is after I visited him and spoke with him, he stopped publishing his rants in The Stranger. Very, very small victory, but I'll take it.